If you open that door without a plan, I swear I'll let that freaky thing take you first. Hold on, hold on. We agree to look first. Looking is important, Silas. Observing. Assessing. Surviving. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking all right. Inside the tavern, shattered lanterns guttered in smoky puddles. The oracle glowed. A fist-sized ember. Soft pulses like a heartbeat. Two faint, ancient eyes flickering open. You're late. We rushed. Streets are burning. Something smashing through the docks. I'm guessing that has your handwriting on it. I left someone important. All right, so what you just heard was six distinct speaking characters in a fully multi voice short story, all created in Spoken Studio. The process is fast, robust, and entirely built around the story itself. So what we're doing now is importing that story into Spoken Studio. Once it's there, we hit Confabulate. From there, we're generating a smart summary of the work and letting the author choose the style of narration that they want. So in this case, I chose multi-voice. A little bit about multi-voice. With this type of narration, we parse every passage spoken aloud by a character from those not spoken aloud, and attribute each passage to its character. Now, at this point, spoken gives me two paths. I can either manually cast every character, or I can let Spoken design and assign a voice for every character automatically. At this stage, Spoken is doing the deep work. For this story, I chose the automatic route, and I selected Hume. Uh, we have two models, Hume and Eleven Labs. I selected Hume for its phenomenal emotional expression and studio-rich voice quality, which I believe lends itself fantastically to multi-voice works. We have the summary pulled up and we can move along. At this point, we're going to make passages and the voices for each character are going to be created. Each character's voice has been created and assigned. This is the stage where Spoken does most of the deep work. It analyzes the manuscript and extracts everything it needs to craft each character's voice, age, gender, accent, region, emotional tone, and those subtle personality traits tied to their arc. Yes, even that deep. Each character ends up with a fully unique voice, one the author actually owns and can use across future stories and universes. So once the cast is generated, I can preview every voice and if I want to tweak something, I can refine the prompts or even swap the voices, as you can see here. And we have a very, very expansive library of both generated voices and voice actor voices. So if I want to preview these voices, I simply click on the play button and we can hear how they sound. Let's take a listen. Hold on, hold on. We agreed to look first. Looking is important, Sam. If you open that door without a plan, I swear I'll let the Sovereign take... Door is already open. All right. So we're really happy with these voices. These are the voices you heard in the story to begin with. And the system generated them very, very accurately to how I wrote them. And that in and of itself just makes my work so much more fluid, so much easier. Now I can move along. I head to the Passages tab. Here's where I'm going to actually edit the narration, I can change the dialogue, speed, volume, padding, emotional cues, everything. And when I want a line delivered exactly the way I envision it, I use something called speak it. Now, I perform the line with my own inflection, like a picky director, and spoken reproduces it perfectly in that character's voice. It's a power tool for authors and voice actors alike. This was my recording. Hold on, hold on. We agreed to look first. Looking is important, Silas. And this was the playback. Hold on, hold on. We agreed to look first. Looking is important, Silas. Observing, assessing, surviving. Perfect. Exactly as I like it. Once everything is locked, I hit Make Spoken. The story generates, runs through our automated post-processing chain, and comes out ready for distribution. This is truly a transformative way to create multi-voice audio. So, here's the rest of the story. Silas, Silas, 
We should leave. Immediately. Faster than immediately. A soft, resonant exhale came from outside, like steam passing through cathedral pipes. That him? He does not announce himself. He just arrives. And why is he after you? I was built to regulate the city's cinder flow. He was built to govern me. I declined governance. Lovely. You quit your ancient job and now your old boss is here to murder you. Hurry, please, this is not the time for commentary. The tavern doorway darkened and the cinder-bound sovereign stepped through. Eight feet tall, eyes burning with precise ancient intellect. Oracle. The sovereign said. Return. That's your greeting. You sound like a debt collector. You misunderstand. This is not negotiation. He sees futures, branching outcomes. In every viable future, one of you dies holding the oracle. This is structural fact. You run the numbers on that brass boy. I do not run numbers. I eliminate them. He wants dominion. If he takes me, he controls every cinderforge in the city. So if he gets the glow ball, we all burn. Correct. Can we please just, just give him back and leave? You want to fold now. I want to live. Hey, no one here is dying. You hear me? The sovereign took a single step forward. Dust cracked under his weight, heat shimmering around him. Your defiance is admirable. Irrelevant, but admirable. Feeling stupid? Yeah. Good. Jonah? No. No, 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 I absolutely do not. Harry threw the lantern hanging above them. Silas caught it. What does that accomplish? Silas smashed the lantern against the leaking gas line overhead. White flame burst downward. The tavern exploded into steam and burning splinters. They dove. Heat scorched. The oracle flickered violently. The sovereign stepped out of the explosion untouched. Steam curling off his armor like morning mist. A most predictable branch. Silas, remind me to punch you later. Later. Move. You cannot run from futures. I have already calculated. Silas clinched the oracle. We'll make a new one. The oracle. Pulsed. Hopeful. Fragile. Unexpected. I like unexpected. Eri grabbed Jonah's collar as they sprinted for the back door. All futures returned to me. Silas didn't look back. Not this one. And they disappeared into the burning alleys of Cinderhaven. Three mismatched hunters and a stolen oracle. Pursued by an ancient mind that had never been wrong.